Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today I'll be evaluating the Patriot accounting software for the Fit Small Business case study chapter 3 which deals with accounts receivable. So let's get started. Our first task in this case study is to set up a sales tax of 6% payable to the state of New York. So we're at our Patriot uh, dashboard here and so generally setting up something permanent like a sales tax rate is going to be under settings yes and here we go under customer payments we have sales tax rates okay and we want to add a new one so let's just call this uh, state of New York and six percent and sure we'll make this the default and click save and there we go there's our sales tax rate so that was simple enough looks like you can create uh, as many as you need so if you uh, make sales in various states or various jurisdictions you can create multiple sales tax oh great okay our uh, next task is to custom customize an invoice template um, so again probably in our settings um, credit memo estimate invoice okay so here we can create special templates for all of these different sales uh, type forms so let's create an invoice template okay email address so it looks like here is where we can customize the text of the invoice and we can do notes to the invoice uh, very nice okay um, let's see you can use the data tags below to insert personalized data into your email subject and body okay very cool so here you say like dear customer name and so you could use a uh, customer first name instead probably oh, let's make sure it didn't quite drag where I wanted it to so let's delete that so if we wanted to use just their first name I think we could probably delete customer name and put in customer first name okay cool so it looks like you can uh, really very nicely customize the text of the body if we come down here it looks like we can choose from about uh, three different templates very nice looking and they seem to be pretty good looking templates uh, here we can upload a logo that's very nice so we can put our logo on it um, and then we can choose colors okay very good and look at this see down here so if your company has a specific color um, you should choose a specific code for the color so you can get exactly the same color in all of your different programs and marketing materials here you can type in that color code and get exactly the color that you're looking for or you can just try to match it by clicking on this tab okay so let's uh, let's select that okay very good so um, there's not a whole bunch of templates to choose from but I think the three that they have are adequate uh, but then you can customize by making uh, by uploading your logo and then choosing the exact color uh, that you want so very good uh, pretty good invoices um, so to our scorecard here we can create a sales tax uh, we can choose an invoice template we can upload the logo and we can change the colors and we can personalize the message so very good in customizing the invoices okay next thing we need to do is um, issue an invoice to family bowling um, for the 40 hours of Hank's labor and the $200 permit fee so if you remember in the last chapter we paid Hank an independent contractor for 40 hours of labor um, so now we want to bill that to our customer family bowling so we need to set up a customer so let's go to our accounting and under receivables we see customers looks like we can import customers um, or we can download what we have in customers as a spreadsheet let's just oh you know what it looks like I had already set up one for family bowling so let's go back to customers okay good so we already have family bowling set up as a customer now remember when we in when we paid Hank those uh, contract labor hours we weren't able to indicate that they were billable to a client some software you can indicate expenses when you pay them they're billable to a client and then you can create an invoice and automatically add those billable expenses here we weren't able to do that so we're going to have to create these uh, 
these billable expenses basically from scratch. We're not able to just click on a button and have them added to the invoice. But we can create an invoice. So let's create an invoice. Um, create new invoice. Okay, select the customer name, family bowling. This is our first invoice date. It's going to default to net 30. I'm sure we can change those to whatever we want. Um, let's say that this is a uh, plumbing project. So we're going to assign it to that department. Um, our product or service. Now remember, we're able to set up these products and services in the last chapter, but we weren't able to use them to uh, record billable expenses. We're only able to use them when we sell them. So we can use contract labor. It's $80 an hour. We're billing them for 40 hours of labor. That's $3,200. We're not going to charge a sales tax on that. If we wanted to, we could click over here and charge the New York sales tax that we had just set up. Okay, if we want specific comments for that invoice, we can actually enter them here. Um, we can attach a file if we want. Um, so good, everything looks good. Create invoice. Okay, and there is our invoice. Looks like we can print it. So it just downloads a PDF, and then we can print the PDF. Um, good. So we could certainly uh, make that a little bit fancier as we had just learned in the customize invoice function. Okay, uh, very good. So that was very easy. Uh, next, um, record an invoice for the sale of 20 plumbing widgets to Big Time Diner for $25 each and be sure to collect the 6% sales tax. So let's do another invoice. So I'm going to go to accounting, invoices. This should show the one invoice that we have here. Yep, there it shows the invoice we just made. Um, okay, and shows that it is still due of 3200 Very good. So let's create a new invoice. This time we're going to make it to Big Time Diner. So we don't have Big Time Diner set up yet, so we can click Add New here. Big time diner, and of course, in real life, we'd want to fill out the address and everything, but we don't need that for our little case study. Big time diner. Um, we set these items up in the last chapter, so these are plumbing widgets, and we're selling them 20 plumbing widgets for $25 each, and we are going to charge tax on that item, and so we have $500 plus $30 of tax. Very good. And so we are going to create that invoice. Okay, and again, if we need to print it, we need to email it, however we want to do it, we can do that over here. I'm going to go to invoices here, and we can see the two invoices that we've created. Super easy. Really love the flow of this program. Okay, so um, our case study asks us a few questions now. So did the program automatically assign the cost of goods sold for those 20 plumbing widgets? And no, it didn't, because we've determined already in those first two chapters, it really does nothing um, with inventory accounting. So you can set up a product for the inventory, but it's not going to, to track the product, track the costs, um, and allocate those automatically to our cost of goods sold. So let's go to our scorecard here. Uh, creating a new customer was easy. Adding unbilled labor, we weren't able to add unbilled labor. We had to just create the entry again. So again, the last chapter we weren't able to use. Uh, they don't use unbilled. Ex or they don't use billable expenses to track uh, expenses. We can print the invoice. Uh, we can email the invoice. Um, we can add inventory to the invoice. We can charge sales tax on that. However, it does not automatically uh, record the cost of goods sold. Okay, very good, moving on. Um, so now we want to create a recurring invoice to uh, Trampoline City for $100 a month for a service contract. So the first thing we want to do is let's set up an additional product and service. So here we have our contract labor and our plumbing widgets. Those are the two we just used on our invoices. Now we want to set up another one. And this is going to be for our monthly service contracts. So I'm just going to call it a service contract. The default is $100 per... Uh, 
they don't have month so we will do per each and we it's not subject to sales tax and we are going to add it to our service revenue okay very good let's save that we now have our item set up for service contract now we want to create a recurring invoice to um, a new client called trampoline city so let's do I'm pretty sure we can do recurring invoices here so let's uh, we'll start off by creating an invoice see if we can then make it recurring okay we're gonna have to add a new add a new customer for trampoline city okay and again you'll want to fill out all the information in real life um, okay very good and this is going to be for a service contract for one hundred dollars no tax so we told it when we set it up not to charge tax so it's not if we for one for some reason if on this particular transaction we do need tax we can click it there and it'll add the tax but we don't want tax okay so now we want to make this a recurring invoice so I'm gonna go ahead and save it and see if there's a place after this to make it recurring here we go and so after we've created the invoice we can hit create recurring okay here we can set up exactly how we want this recurring invoice to look and let's hit save settings okay so did that do anything let's go back to our invoices does it say anything about this now being a recurring well let's uh can we uh, I don't see anything in here that says that it's now recurring. Yeah, that's weird. It said create recurring and it took us to the default stuff. Okay, so now that we've set up a template for the recurring invoice, now when we click it, it takes us here to actually create the recurring invoice. Okay, so the problem was before we didn't have a we didn't have a template for the recurring invoice set up. Now we do. Now we can choose this to start on um, I guess I guess the mar the the March 7th one is the one we just created so we're going to want to jump forward to April and we will set it on April 4th okay and hit continue and then it should be able to tell us um, monthly on the 4th your next invoice will be sent April 4th okay repeat forever we can do payment terms we'll keep them on net 30 okay save so here we have recurring invoices starting on May on April 4th we can go ahead and we can edit the schedule edit the template okay now let's go invoices okay and so we still do have the March 7th one and now we also have an April 7th one um, good okay so that seemed to work very very easily so let's go ahead and grade it in our scorecard here so we're able to create an item for the service contract set up an automatic uh, invoice okay so moving on um, uh, so you receive a check from Family Bowling for the full amount of the invoice, record the receipt of the check, but don't deposit it in the bank account. Okay, so the reason we don't want to deposit it directly in the bank account is that when you collect multiple checks, 
and then you deposit all of those checks into your bank account, they show up as one line item on your bank statement. So in our software, we would like to do the same thing. We'd like to, to accumulate all of our checks for the day into one deposit and then deposit that into the bank account. So it shows up in our check register as a one line item so that we can easily match it to our bank statement. Um, so QuickBooks Online does a great job of this. Um, most other software does not. So let's see if we can do this. So we are going to collect the full amount from Family Bowling. So we're looking at our invoices here. We see Family Bowling owes us $3,200. Click on Actions, Apply Payment, Cash Payment Type. They paid us with a, nope, they paid us with a check and they paid us the full amount. However, notice that you could, if we wanted to, we could do something less than that, it looks like. But they paid us the full amount of $3,200. Uh, we can type in their checking number and we can say pay in full. Okay, and hit save customer payment. Now, the one interesting thing, let's see, can we pull that up again? Did it show where we were actually depositing it? So it did put it into the checking account. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into another invoice. I'm wondering if we can change where we put that. So that went directly into the checking account. So it's already showing as being deposited, which like I talked about, it's not ideal. But just, just make sure there's not any other option. So let's just, we're not going to record the payment yet, but I want to, again, look at the information it collects. So let's apply payment. Hmm. It is not letting us choose where we want to put this payment. That shows us the detail of the invoices, but it does not show us where we're going to deposit it. Hmm. Huh. That's very interesting. So it automatically deposits it into our checking account. Hmm. Okay, but that's fine. That's where we want it deposited. Um, I don't know what happens if you have multiple checking accounts. So. Okay. Um, Good. So on, uh, so now we have an unknown customer comes to the office and purchases a plumbing widget for $25 cash. So we have a walk-in customer, so we don't want to save this. Um, so we'll just leave it. That should not save it. So um, what we want to do is see if we can do some sort of receipt. So we want to receive $25 of income, of cash, recorded as income, but not run it through as an invoice because that's kind of time consuming. Um, but it doesn't look like there's any other way to do it. There is no, um, yeah, there is no other like a sales receipt. So it looks like that's what we'll have to do. So we can do this. We can just, um, just create a new invoice. Now I'm just going to create a customer. We don't know who this was. I'm just going to call this customer a walk-in customer and we'll use this for all of our walk-in customers. Now in a HVAC and plumbing company, walk-in customers are going to be very rare. So we're, we're going to do it this way. However, if you have a, a retail space where customers come, then obviously this is not the way you want to do it. This is going to be way too cumbersome. You'll need some nice point of sale system, a POS system um, to record your activity with your walk-in customer. So this is a rarity for a plumbing company. So we're going to go ahead and do it this way. So we're going to create an invoice um, for plumbing widgets, $25. Make sure we charge tax. Okay. And now we're going to have to create the invoice. Okay. And now we can directly apply the payment immediately. So this really wasn't too bad. And so it's cash. $25 because you can apply the payment directly from that screen. It'd be nice if you could create a sales receipt instead of an invoice, um, but it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Oh, so we want to do $26.50 and pay in full. Okay. And save customer payment. Okay. 
Good. Now, um, so let's let's go to our. I noticed this down here. We have a uh, deposit withdrawal screen. Let's see if maybe those checks we're receiving are sitting there waiting to be deposited. Hmm, it does not seem to be. Deposit to checking. Yeah, it does not appear that, that there's anywhere here where it shows those two amounts we just received waiting to be deposited. So I do think they probably went directly into the checking account, but we can easily check that. Let's go to our reports. And let's go to our... our check register. Okay, our checking account register. Yep, very good. So we have our payment to Hank. This was our beginning balance, our payment to Hank, our customer pay payment we received, and our customer. So it is taking those deposits and automatically depositing them into our checking account. So the problem is when we go to reconcile our checking account, um, it's just going to be one line item for these amounts instead of separate line items, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to reconcile. Okay, but that's okay. Again, software at this price level, this is very common. Okay, um, so let's uh, score this in our scorecard here. So receive a check on an outstanding invoice, very easy. Don't deposit the check. We can't do that. It automatically deposits it. Um, issue a sales receipt for a sale paid immediately. It does not have that sales receipt function. You have to run it through the invoicing function, so we're not going to be able to give it credit for that. Okay. Um, now let's look at uh, you receive a check from Big Time Diner for $200 toward their invoice. Later they come in and pay the remaining $300. And 30. So what we're wondering here is if they can short pay us or make a partial payment on their invoice. And I think we've already seen that they can. So look at our invoices. We should have an outstanding invoice from Big Time Diner for $530. Uh, very good. So um, we are going to reapply a payment to this. A check. Um, however, they did not pay the full 530. They only paid $200 of it. Okay, and so let's hit pay partial. And so now we can actually apply this $200 however we want. Okay, and so we are going to just apply it to the plumbing widgets, not the sales tax. Okay, and now we can hit save customer payment. Okay, good. Now let's go back to our invoice screen. Now we see Big Time Diner, original amount 530. They owe us now 330, so it's been partially paid. Uh, now they pay the rest of it for us, so we're going to apply another payment. A check for $330. Um, pay in full. And there we go. Save customer payment. Very easy to do. Now if we look at our invoices, I think the only one we have left is the walk-in you know, of Trampoline City's service contract. So very good. Now everything's been paid in full. Okay, so scorecard. Um, accept the short payment from the customers. That's the partial payment. Yes, combine multiple checks into a single deposit. We were not able to do that. Viewing outstanding invoices is very easy. Um, we don't have to generate a report to view them. Okay. Okay, so moving on in our case study. Um, almost done with this chapter. Um, so Big Time Diner returns two plumbing widgets. So accept these widgets back into inventory and issue them a credit memo, including the sales tax 
adjustments. So I do believe we can do this. Um, so we want to issue a customer credit. So here we go. We have under receivables, we have credits. We didn't find any unallocated credits. Okay, so we're going to add a new credit. And this is Big Time Diner returning plumbing widgets. Okay, um, plumbing widgets, two of them. Okay, so that's for $50 plus the sales tax adjustment. So we're going to give them a credit of $53. And let's save that credit. There we go. And there, that shows us that we have a credit for Big Time Diner. We can print it or email it. Um, very good. So now let's go back. And I'm guessing if we go to credits, it'll now show that one credit we have, just like it does invoices. Okay. Very good. Um, we can view that credit balance. Now we want to refund the credit balance by issuing them a check. So this can be sometimes difficult. Um, a lot of times you'll keep this credit and then if they want to uh, keep this credit and then if they buy something else you'll apply it to the future invoices. What is this view all credits? Yeah, see, I don't see a button here to refund it. Um, I do think if we issue them a credit, we an uh, invoice, we can probably credit that to them. So I think if we wanted to, if we wanted to uh, pay them fifty-three dollars, we'd probably have to just write them a check out of the check register, and put that. Um, Hopefully we could record that as a negative sales, but we're not able to, to, to issue them a check through the credit function. So let's go to our scorecard here. Um, issue a credit memo to a customer. We can, and if we wanted to apply that to a future invoice, that would work great. Um, we can include the sales tax adjustment on that credit memo. Um, it doesn't track inventory, so we weren't able to track that. Uh, we could view the balance by the customer. However, we couldn't issue a check to refund the balance. So if you wanted to issue a cash refund or a check refund, then don't do it through the credit memos. Just write them a check um, through the, just like you would paying your bills. Okay, so um, now we want to just do a few things here. Let's see if we can view the transactions summarized by customer. So if we go to customers, are we able to look at the transactions for that customer? customer information and I think we could probably get to invoices payments credits yeah very good okay so we can do the uh, transactions by customer now sales tax liability let's see what kind of reports it gives us for our sales tax liability uh, let's go to reports sales tax to extend this into March. Okay, yeah, very good. It gave us the $30 we collected, the $3 adjustment for the credit memo, and then we have some walk, the amount collected from walk-in customers. So this is what we owe the state of New York. We can download it as a spreadsheet if we need to attach it to the report. So very good. Um, pay the sales tax liability with a check. Um, not sure it has a function for that. Let's take a look here. I'm not seeing a function for it, um, but let's see if we can just um, do it as a, what is the print vendor checks? I think we need to do the enter and pay bills. Okay, check date is today. The vendor is the state of New York. 
the expense account. Now we don't want this to be an expense account. We want this to be our sales tax collected account. Okay. We don't need a 1099. Okay. And we're going to hit save now. Okay. So we're going to pay state of New York and we are going to make that payment. Oh, I forgot what it was. Let's just make it $300. But we should look at the report and determine the right amount to pay. Okay, and next. Okay, State of New York, $300 total. Approve payments. Okay, and I am just, yeah, let's go ahead and print the check now. Enter the starting check number that we've stick in the register and then download the checks. Okay, and there we go. There's our PDF to print the checks with. Okay, now let's go back to our report and let's see, make sure it properly applied that to our sales tax liability. So 33, yeah, it did not. So this is showing our sales tax liability as of 331 of 2850, okay? If we go to our balance sheet, as of 331. Yeah, see, so now the problem is our liability report is not matching our balance sheet. So it did properly put it into this sales tax collected account, right? But it didn't um, show up in our, see, what's the date on that? This three hundred dollar payment. It is as today. Yeah, so that's not um, great. Makes me really think I'm missing something here that we weren't able to do that. So let me do just a little bit of research. Okay, I'm back. So it does not appear like there is a way to, to record the sales tax submitted. Um, so I think you basically just look at this report and it's always by default, as we've seen, it's for the prior month. You would then issue that check and it'll offset your sales tax liability. So your balance sheet will show zero. It won't show up on the sales tax report, however. But as long as you're only looking at the prior month each time, it really shouldn't matter if the payment shows up because you're not looking at old stuff. You're only looking at the new stuff you haven't submitted yet. Um, so it does not have a great feature to submit your sales taxes and then those come off of the sales tax report. So pay sales tax liability with a check. Um, I'm not going, I'll give it half a point because you could write a check. Um, you cannot submit it electronically through the software. You can't file your sales tax return through the software. Um, so there are a few missing options in Patriot dealing with accounts receivable, but the stuff that it does do is very, very easy to use. And so I'm going to give it um, 0.9 out of one point for subject subjective ease of use. Very easy to use. I really like this software um, as long as you don't need any of these missing functions. So uh, primary function it's missing is inventory accounting, um, but also if you uh, have billable expenses to pass through on your invoices to your customers, you can't automatically pass them through. You have to just create the invoice from scratch. And the problem with that is that you might miss expenses. You might pay an expense and then forget to bill that expense to a customer. Okay, great. Well, that was Patriot Software Chapter 3 of the Fit Small Business Case Study. I hope you found this video useful and uh, have a great day.